Today in Driveway Mechanic, we're going to change the antifreeze on a 2000 Dodge Caravan 3 liter. Why is it Driveway Mechanic? Well, because I don't have a garage, so I have to do all my repairs on my driveway. But that's okay. Today we're going to drain the antifreeze. We're already starting. This vehicle's got about 183,000 kilometers on it, so uh, it definitely is due. That uh, does not look very healthy. The, to be honest, it's the actual original factory um, fluid, so definitely time for a change. So I've opened the pet cock underneath the, on the bottom of the rad, and of course I've opened up the rad cap which was cold, so I could uh, get some additional pressure flowing into, into the drain. And so, what I'm so gonna... this is what came out of the rad. It's pretty rust colored. That's not good factory fluid after 17 years. It's been the family van and so it's seen some miles and unfortunately the coolant system was the last thing to be serviced, which isn't a smart thing. So uh, don't let it don't let maintenance go too long. Don't take it for granted. You never know what you're buggering up your engine, your water pump, who, who knows? But uh, yeah, yuck. Driveway mechanic. Take your uh, rad cap off and just run some plain old water through here. It will drain out the bottom of your rad, but that'll be an additional bit of flush. And uh, of course you're gonna put distilled water. You don't wanna use regular uh, hose water because it's got too much mineral content and crap in there that's gonna just gum up your system, so. Next is I'm going to take off this assembly. I've already removed the two uh, 10 millimeter bolts, and then I'm also going to be taking, uh, loosening this clamp as well as there is a clamp uh, down right there. And so I'm going to take off this assembly and uh, I'm going to get better access to the heater hoses and heater hoses which are those which will run to the engine of course that will give me better access also to changing out the lower rad hose I'm also going to be changing out the upper rad hose and the thermostat as well in here and uh, I'm also going to be taking apart taking this shroud system off too that also allows easier access to the hoses one of the tools i really like to use when i'm taking apart these types of uh, clamps you know, like these uh, hose clamps that are there um, that one's easy to get out but this one's a little bit more of a challenge so what i like to do is get one of these flexible 3 8 uh, screwdrivers and bends so it allows me to get into areas that are a little tight because it flexes, I can get right in. Okay, so I've got that uh, air assembly out. So that allows you to get into your throttle body. Uh, that's a good thing to clean. If you got throttle body injector, now's the time to give it a good cleaning uh, inside. Now you can tell or not, but inside there is a little silver flap. That gets stuck and gummed up, and that can cause a lot of problems. That can cause a lot of problems when you're uh, coming to a stop. Your uh, vehicle wants to kind of almost stutter to a stop. Be surprised, that's all it takes. Anyways, back to what we're doing. We're doing the um, rad hose change out stuff here. These are gonna be clamps I'm gonna remove, and that's gonna be the lower rad hose. And uh, by the way, in case you wanna change your air filter, this is the assembly here. Behind this uh, uh, front cap is uh, your air filter. So, um, we have the uh, hoses that go to your heater core. Um, I'm gonna have to check which one this is, if this is the return or supply. Um, but there's another hose down here that clamps to there. So uh, I'm gonna say because this is, yeah. So what I wanna do is I wanna take out this assembly here. What it's gonna do is allow me access to my uh, coolant return hose. It's gonna access my upper rod hose area. So what you wanna do is you wanna take out a number 10 um, socket on a nut on that one 
and also on there. As well, you're gonna have a bunch of screws there, 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 and yeah, there's five of them. So once you remove that, then this assembly can come out. And there you go, once that uh, upper shroud area is removed, you got full access to your um, coolant recovery tube, which is gonna be good to help drain out the coolant recovery. And of course, you can see you can get right in on that uh, hose up here. Gives you a chance to uh, yeah, take a look. Voila, driveway mechanic. One thing to keep in mind when working with antifreeze is it's a highly toxic substance. You do not want any animals to get a hold of this stuff. It's sweet to the taste and they will drink it and it's fatal to them. So do not get this stuff on your driveway or whatever. Make sure you use proper uh, recovery uh, containers, you know, a good um, pail and a large size uh, drain. One thing I'd encourage you to do is since you're in this already to do the repairs, take a number 10 socket, take out this bolt that's on your recovery tank. And what that'll do, once you've got that all loosened up, it allows you to remove the tank altogether. And I'd strongly suggest to do that. And then that way you can get a good thorough cleaning of, of the tank because it gets gross in there. And again, that gets the rear engine causing damage and wear. And that's what it looks like inside. So, get in there with some, uh, I don't know, pipe cleaner, really big industrial pipe cleaner brush, and those baby bottle brushes, something, anything, hot water, soap, agitate the hell out of this thing, stick some rocks in there or something to just get it agitated. Of course, clean everything out, make sure it's 100% before you put it back in the vehicle. Driveway mechanic. All right, so I used a pair of vice grips to squeeze that clamp and slide it over the uh, hose enough so that I could just slide the hose off of the upper portion of the rad hose. Area. So I find the uh, vice grips work pretty good. There is another pair of pliers that works specifically designed for that, but you know what? I'm a driveway mechanic. I don't have all the fun tools, so uh, that'll get the job done. And then, of course, I'm going to go in and do the same thing there to uh, pull the hose, and I'm going to get into the thermostat. So as you can see, a pair of vice grips works pretty nice. You get the jaws open up wide enough that you can get around that clamp and compress it in, it locks it in. And uh, then you can just maneuver that away. Just make sure if your uh, pliers slip, you're not smashing into your distributor cap or buggering in here. There was, be careful around here. Last thing you wanna do is cause more work for yourself. And because this van is 17 years old, one of the other reasons I'm replacing the upper and lower rat hose is because this looks cruddy. And I'm going on a trip, so the last thing I want is for a $15 uh, rat hose to blow while I'm driving on the highway in the hot temperatures. So, you know, being proactive, replace the hose if you see this kind of stuff. It's not worth your hassle on the road for a breakdown. So underneath the van, lower rad hose connects to the rad right there and onto the rad. And that clip, oh, a little tough to get at. Different angle, obviously from the top. You can see the clamp. Uh, where are we at here? Yeah, you, can kinda, you can see the clamp you need to get at. So if you want to try pulling this from the top, that works as well. Your choice, your frustration. One of the other reasons I like using vice grips on these types of clamps when I don't have the other good pair of pliers is because the ridges of the pliers will grab the ends of those clamp. And then what you can do is you can tighten this. Just use this to tighten it. I mean, yeah, you could open the jaws further, but sometimes that's not practical. And uh, so you just open up the jaws as well as you can. You tighten this thing by hand. That'll compress the jaws in even further and then allows you to, once it's wide enough in there, you can actually slide the clamp over. And voila, freeze that one. Now, over the years, this hose will be tight. It's gonna be stuck on this, this pipe. So, wiggle it back and forth a little bit. So when you wiggle it, and then you can also, once you've broken that seal, 
you can twist it and it'll twist off. You can see we're already getting the uh, and with the pan being underneath, this should give me some fluid here. Or not. Okay, that's cool. Just the lower rad drained enough that you're able to get that off there. And then you can see there's there's scudge and rust. Ugh. So make sure you clean that off carefully with a wire brush. Don't damage the pipe. You don't want to be replacing that. Okay, I got the lower rad hose off. And it wasn't easy to get at. Definitely disconnect your battery connections on your vehicle so that you don't accidentally hit your starter area. Not that I did, but it's just, you're working really close. These clamps I love and I hate. I ended up having to go with a smaller set of vice grips. Reason being is because the length of the either channel locks or other vice grips you just have no workspace so get a small pair of channel um, vice grips open them up so that you can get your clamp in here squeeze it down and be careful taking it off at the factory they barely got this thing clamped on yikes but hey it held for 17 years one other thing to be careful of on the three liters, you've got that connection right there. You don't want to be messing with that because that being to your uh, AC compressor, you don't want to get that messed up. So be careful working around that. Okay, so when I ordered this hose from the local parts supplier, obviously being 17 years old, the uh, van, the, uh, it's not an exact match. The bends are pretty close. So, this is an XL84190. This is a Prestone branded. It's by Prestone, not getting paid by these guys, so it's just what they, what I got uh, from the auto shop. And um, this one was 40 bucks Canadian. Upper rat hose is 16 bucks Canadian, so. As you can tell, there's a difference in what the factory put as this versus this stuff. And, uh, and then, of course, transfer your clamps over. Clean up your uh, fittings on the rad itself. All right, I got that lower rad hose on. And I must say that this clamp is the worst mofo ever. Uh, putting a conventional pipe clamp on here Post clamp, um, you know, you're gonna have problem getting into it as well. Uh, so, yeah, once you've got this thing off, make sure you got good pliers. Find on eBay the proper hose pipe uh, cl clamps, pliers, because this is ridiculous trying to get this thing on it. You don't have a lot of workspace. I ended up having to use a combination of uh, channel locks and two different sizes of vice grips and just try to work them in different stages to try to eventually get that clamp into place. And uh, the other end of the hose went on easily. Um, take a little bit of soapy water, put it on the uh, inlet pipes and the inside of the hoses, they'll slide on a lot easier less uh, hassle for your day but uh, definitely be prepared to spend some time trying to put that uh, lower trying to put this lower uh, hose on that clamp sucks okay so I ended up taking this clamp and compressing it so I can sl slid it off this hose was really stuck on so um, I ended up having to use the vice grips to kind of give it a bit of a kiss around and then kind of just kept working it back and forth. I would take a screwdriver and just, you know, get underneath here a little bit to kind of coax it along while pulling along and of course then it obviously will pop off. Um, it's kind of cruddy inside so you know, that obviously leads me to believe that, that was contributing to it as well. And of course the nipple end here is uh, very, was, you know, it's, it's got muck on it. So got that all, uh, clean that off. Then when that's all cleaned off, then um, make sure you mark which hose is which. Because 
we're gonna end up taking Undo this one, which uh, will feed, and which feeds up to the back of the firewall. And so that's your your supply and return hoses for your uh, heater core inside the vehicle. So we're going to back flush those, and then once it's all said and done, uh, reconnect them. Okay, so what I decided to do is to pull the heater core hoses that run to the engine block. Figured after 17 years, why leave them in as a weak length that I could blow. One thing I would suggest doing is marking your, your hoses. Heater core, uh, go to the bottom spout, which will be the bottom plug. And then the other one will be heater core top. Was that top one? Now, here's the thing to remember. You get them confused. The heater core upper goes to the lower of the two of these tubes. So this is your lower tube. That goes to the heater core upper. This one is your engine upper tube. That will go to the bottom one. So it's just the reverse. Anyways, that way you can take them to the parts uh, counter and you can just get them to give you some bulk tube. Uh, don't forget to transfer this protective wiring loom on. It's something the factory put on, obviously for a reason. To help preserve it from heat exposure so uh you know just uh transfer them across put on a couple of new wire or uh nylon ties uh, don't forget to clean your uh connectors too because uh, why leave uh, crud on there when you're putting new hoses the uh, heater core hoses uh, again just got a uh, bulk 5 8 diameter uh, heater hose transferred over the uh, protective covering it's all good with the heater hoses disconnected from the upper engine block and lower output pipe I back flush the heater core with a standard garden hose and a hose adapter nipple you can pick this up at your local hardware store quite easily for a buck or two plug into the return port the lower of the two on the firewall and turn on the water but not to full pressure quarter to half pressure should work Remove the hose and adapter. Next, use the air from your mouth to force air through the lines to clear out the garden hose water from the heater core. Finally, attach the heater hoses to the proper tubes of the upper engine and lower output points. Remember the X tip from earlier? So, as part of this uh, cooling system flush and fill and all this stuff, I'm changing the thermostat. Again, 17 years is a long time for a thermostat to run. I'm impressed it's ran this long. So, uh, it's right there. You need a 13 millimeter ratchet on an extension. That'll uh, get at that fairly easily. It'll remove two bolts, and then you've got your thermostat housing here. Now, this can be a little challenging. I've been scraping at it a bit to get the old gasket off. Uh, be careful, you don't want to really score up the mating surface here. You're going to put a new gasket on anyways, but I'm going to go and use some uh, fine grit sandpaper just to make sure anything I've gouged up, I'm going to rough out and uh, smooth out. And, uh, but yeah, this is your gasket. It's going to be a little bit of a bugger to get off, but make sure you do that. Once you've got the housing off, pay attention to the orientation of the thermostat. There uh, may be a uh, particular direction for this to seat properly on the uh, 3 liter V6 2000 caravan series that's uh, uh, this has to be positioned a certain way. One of the nice things I like to feature on Driveway Mechanic is the 5 o'clock rush hour. That's right, I'm parked on a busy main street, so hey, I got a lot of viewers. Today's mascot is Sierra. She is a whippet that is crossed with an Australian Shepherd. She's a 10-year-old puppy of ours, and uh, you know, she's a great supervisor. So hats off to our supervisor, Sierra. So one thing that I would recommend doing is get, when you want to reinstall the uh, housing assembly, get a good flat piece of wood and some 400, 800 grit sandpaper and sand that nice and smooth. Just to make sure you get rid of any imperfections that you may have done, gouging the surface, removing the gasket. Because, uh, yeah, while we're not driving a Lamborghini or high-end Porsches or whatever, uh, last thing you need is a friggin' leak from your gasket because uh, 
you've got a small valley or something coming out the edge. Uh, it's not really practical to try to use a uh, uh, plastic scraper or anything to try to remove the gasket. These, this gasket was on pretty hard, so I mean it, uh, you know, I did end up nicking it a few places. So I'm going to just use some 400 and 800 grit sandpapers and a flat block of wood. Standard 400, 800, a little bit of water on there, wet sand it, should all be perfect. Okay, so this is the old uh, one that's 17 years old. Probably would have ran a little longer, but who the hell knows when it's gonna fail. I've installed the replacement in there, I cleaned up the housing, and I put the gasket in there. One thing that is not shown anywhere, and I don't know where the hell it's low listed, but it just made logical sense. When installing a gasket, and I've got a Felpro gasket that had a, an extra bit of red rubber on the one side of the gasket. I put that downward facing towards the thermostat, thinking that that's going to give an extra bit of seal at the thermostat level. Then you go gasket, then you go up to the uh, housing. So uh, if that's wrong, it doesn't take much. It's only two bowls to come out. Uh, it's 8.75 foot pounds or 105 uh, inch pounds. I mean, it's a gasket, it's a gasket, it's on there, it's new. Uh, everything's uh, looking good. So uh, yeah, uh, now we just gotta put some hoses back on. The rat hose I'm installing, it's a Prestone brand one. Again, not getting paid for this. It's just what I was given when I ordered the part. I'm gonna get that installed next. The rust involves putting everything back together. Ensure the petcock valve at the bottom of the rat is closed. Reinstall the coolant recovery bottle. Reinstall the front plastic shroud cover. Reinstall the air cleaner box to throttle body and hose assembly. Fill system at the radiator cap with the recommended 50-50 distilled water and antifreeze coolant mixture. Fill the recovery bottle to the lower mark on the tank for now. Run the engine for about 10 minutes with the rad cap off to burp out any air in the system. Squeeze the upper radiator hose to help remove trapped air pockets. This hose may be getting hot, so be careful. Check for any leaks while the engine is running. Replace the rad cap onto the radiator. Add more premixed coolant to the recovery bottle up to the midpoint level. Check coolant fluid levels over the next few days of driving. Always add fluid to the bottle, not to the radiator. So we're all done. The uh, upper rad hose and thermostat's been replaced. And I've also changed out the uh, heater core hoses. Uh, again, just got a uh, bulk 5 8 diameter uh, heater hose transferred over the uh, protective covering. It's all good. Yeah, so this is driveway mechanic saying, uh, yes, you can do it. It's going to take a little longer than a shop would, but you know, you're probably going to get the satisfaction of doing it yourself, knowing what you did. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you. Click like and subscribe.